So how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel and part two of our inrush current testing on this series of current clamps. Um, I will leave a link to part one in the description box below. For those that haven't watched that video, I'll just give a brief summary here based upon the findings of that. The tests on the first part are just on a single core, so they went up to 60 amps, testing both AC and DC. As you see from the results here, uh, for the HT208D, the CM46 and the UT216C, they had pretty reasonable results on DC. Uh, they were all reading a little bit low. The UNI-T was 20% low, the HT208D was 10% low, and the CM46 was 5% low on average. But on AC inrush, they were all pretty good, predominantly within specification. Uh, the 189B, the RS Pro unit, uh, that was good on AC, but was no good on DC in rush current measurements. Uh, CM55 and the Testo 770-3, they were both poor on AC and DC. All the readings were out of tolerance for that one. And finally for the Neptune, that was 100% within specification for both AC and DC in rush current measurements. So as in that previous video, I will do all the tests on the Kaiwitz HT208D. Uh, we're going to be looking at the higher current levels on this one, trying to take it up towards its 1000 amps. Obviously all the instruments do have different um, ranges available for them, so I won't be able to go so high on all of them. Uh, so we are set up for inrush on that one. We are on the 50 turn coil. Uh, we are on a 50 hertz measurement, so we will just see what we get for a 50 amp. Okay, so it doesn't like that. And we'll try 2 amps, which will be equivalent to 100 amps. And there you see we've got 103 amps. Uh, these instruments do have a threshold value on them, um, so obviously it needs to see above 100 amps when you're on the 1000 amp scale. Uh, go through. There must be a quicker way of uh, resetting this, but I've not found it yet. Um, so that was 100 amps. Uh, we'll go to 250 amps. So that is 261 for a 250 amp injection. Try injecting 10 amps, which will be 500 amps. So that's 500 amps there. So our final one on this we try will be uh, 950 amps. I won't go to the full 1000 because it might go over range as this instrument does try and read high a lot of the time. Uh, 993 there with 950 amps injected. Okay, so we'll just convert it all to DC and we'll repeat those same readings with DC. So I'll just do the 50 amps again just to see if it registers on DC, which it doesn't appear to have done. So we'll move straight to uh, 100 amps. Doesn't register on that one either. So I'll just take it up uh, another 50 amps and just see if we can get a reading at 150. And we do. So as you can see, it has picked up. Uh, 150 amp injection but it's read it a little bit low at 140 amps and I think that's why it doesn't pick up on the 100 amp it's probably reading 90 or something like that uh, which isn't enough to trigger it so we'll go in rush so we'll return to our 250 amps uh, 244 amps that's pretty good actually because that's more accurate than the AC measurement but it was 261 Okay, so we'll go for 500 amps in rush. 488. And finally, our 950 amps. And that's coming out at 900 amps, so a little bit low on that one. Okay, so we'll move over to our CM46. Um, this is obviously only a 400 amp clamp, so I won't be able to do the whole range of measurements that we did with the Kai Wheats. So for the rest of the clamps, I've settled on injecting 350 amps into them, AC and DC, to demo them. We're here with our CM46 setup. We're going to do 50 hertz, so AC signal coming in. 
and you can see we've got 353 on AC there. So we can just convert him to DC. And reset. And this will be the DC one going in. 340, so not too bad. If I remember correctly, this was one of the better ones when we tested initially with the single turn coil. So, but that one seems all okay. Okay, so we've set up the CM55 here from Fleur. This was the most troublesome instrument from the first video. Uh, again, 350 amps AC going in. And we've picked up 323 there, uh, which is considerably low, really. Let's set it up to DC. And we're going to inject that. And you can see we are 130, so really problematic, which the DC one, as I said before, we kind of accept that with it being a Rogowski style coil, but the AC 50 Hz measurement is still somewhat lower than expected, really. Okay, so we'll not come out of the way and we'll move on to the next clamp. So here we are with our RS Pro 158B setup. We are going in with 50 hertz signal, 350 amps, and we get 345.2, which is pretty good. We'll do a little reset on him, and we will convert the signal to DC, and go again. Uh, this time you can see we've got 221, uh, which is considerably out. It's fairly consistent with the readings from the first video where we had good AC and bad DC reading. Our testo unit was another problematic one. So again, we'll start off with the AC signal on this one, which should be good. And it's 370.5, that is a little bit high, isn't it? Um, just uh, do that one again, see if we're consistent. 68, so we're fairly consistent anyway. And um, what you also do see with this one is uh, from the magnetic induction, this does have a little wobble to it, and I'm not sure whether you noticed that on the video. Reset, and we go to DC, and we get 144. So again, consistent with the first video, but good, or reason, I should say reasonable AC in rush measurement, but DC is just no good at all. Get him out the way, and then we move on to our Uni T unit. It's set up for inrush. Move on back to 50 hertz. So that's 50 hertz signal coming in. And we've got 344.5, which is very good. Uh, we'll Reset him, and move him to DC input, go again, and I've got 292, so, so it's probably one of the better ones for the standard clamps for measuring DC, but it is still out by quite a margin really. What I will just do, uh, we'll convert this to DC because this has a separate AC and DC function on the actual dial. And if I hold in the inrush key again, you can see it doesn't react. So you can only set up inrush measurement when this is on the actual AC signal there. And then you see there that it comes up. So, okay, so we are set up with our HT Neptune instrument. We hit the go button on 400 amps AC there. And we'll inject. And you can see we get 354 which is uh, 4 amps above the 350, so that is all well and good. Uh, you need to hit the go button again to reinitialize that, and we'll flip them over to the 400 amps DC, and change our test set to DC, and go again. And, ooh, something's gone wrong there, hasn't it? It's, uh, I didn't like that. There we go, 352. 
So as per the test in the first video, this instrument comes out as the most accurate for AC and DC inrush measurements from all of the instruments available to me. Okay, so time to get this fed into the computer and see what our actual tolerances are. So here's our results table, uh, same format as in the previous video. We've got the calculated tolerance bands down in the table below for you to reference to. And then the top two tables have the measurement values and the deviation from nominal for each of those readings. Uh, we'll take a look at our Kiwix HD208D. You can see all the readings are within specification. Uh, your AC amps is reading a little bit high on, up to 6% high and your DC amps was reading a little bit low on down to 5% uh, uh, low at the 950 amp reading there. Now they are kind of within tolerance because you lost a digit for the 1000 amp range for this instrument therefore the plus or minus 10 digits is actually 10 amps plus or minus 10 amps so that gives you quite a good tolerance allowance really for those readings but having said that you know within 6% for a current clamp that's a pretty respectable reading really. Uh, FLIR CM46, uh, we have good AC amps readings, our DC amps are a little bit out, up to 8% out, again reading low, so again fairly respectable um, and it is reasonably consistent across those ranges but obviously only 400 amp range for that current clamp so not as many readings there. Uh, our FLIR CM55 uh, yeah, I just don't know what to say about this really. Um, all those readings predominantly are out of spec, apart from the very first measurement on AC amps. So I'm not sure what's happening with that unit at all. That needs further investigation, um, as does really the Testo 770-3 as well in the second table there. Oddly enough, the 350 amp reading is just within spec, but it's only just within spec if you look at the uh, calculated tolerance band. Um, having said that, for both of them, the DC amps readings are fairly consistently around about 60% out of spec for both of them. Um, so yeah, uh, those both those instruments need a little bit more of a look at to see if I can figure out what's going on with them. Uh, the RS Pro, uh, very respectable for the AC amps readings, um, all less than 1%. Can't complain at that really, can you? And then again, the DC amps is out, uh, but 36, 35% very consistent across there. So it would give you an indication of what's going on. Uh, and if you're aware that you are reading low with it, um, that can be an advantage, I guess. Um, our UT216C is a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, some of the AC readings are out, um, not by much, but they are a little bit out. And then our DC amps, again, around about 20-ish percent reading low. Once again, there is some consistency there for the DC amps, but obviously not close enough to the expected values. Uh, and then we have our HD Neptune again, uh, the final one. Uh, as with the previous set of tests, all those readings are within tolerance and pretty good specification as well. Less than like, uh, 2 percent 2 is the highest deviation there that you see. For me there, that would be my choice of instrument for measuring in rush current, really. I'm uh, pretty happy with that instrument. The clamp adapter I've got for that can only go up to 400 amps, so we're missing a couple of readings with that. I might see if I can find a current clamp adapter uh, with AC DC capability that can measure up to 1000 amps and give that a go with it to see what it's like. But there you have it. It looks like you can read DC in rush amps with some of these clamp meters. It does tend to be specific to individual clamp types, um, and there isn't much consistency across them, so you kind of have to test the unit you've got to see what's going on with it really unless you happen to have one of these units that I've tested here and you can use this for a bit of guidance um, but it looks like it is capable to some extent uh, but that'll be it for this video uh, thanks very much for watching I hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one